We talk with William Gunter for the second time in the last couple of months. He joined us at SEC Media Days. He is co-host of the early game on 107.5 The Game uh, in uh, South Carolina, covers South Carolina athletics, amongst many other things. Will, appreciate your time. How are you today? <laughs> well, I'm getting back. I was in Key West all last week for the final vacation before the start of football season, so you guys know what it's like to come back from the beach to work. That's a good time. So you were better last week than you are right now, is what you're, basically what you're telling us. Do they, still, yeah. Have, yeah, do they still have the chickens all over the place in Key West? I heard they cleaned them up. No, they're there. Yeah, okay. they were there. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know if they're hopping on tables like they, they weren't hopping on tables when I was down there. They're still, still running. Those and iguanas, they're still running around pretty freely down there. Okay. Well, I didn't, you know, you're not going to, like, ruin what makes Key West what it is. I mean, that and the key lime pie and everything that goes along with it. South Carolina football. Used to be these programs played each other every year from 1992 through 2013, but uh, this will just be the third matchup since then, and and two programs under uh, not new head coaches anymore. It's the second year for Shane Beamer, third year for Sam Pittman. Arkansas seemed to develop their team personality, what they were all about last year: toughness at the line of scrimmage, running the football first and foremost. Uh, what do you think was instilled in South Carolina by Shane Beamer in, in what was maybe a better-than-expected first season? It, it might sound kind of stupid, but I think it was just a love for football again, and it's hard to explain if, if you kind of weren't around. But uh, I think Will Muschamp did some good things during his tenure here, but unfortunately the way he ran his program, um, it, it really – was is very strange. It was, it was strange in the fan base. It was strange within the team to see almost just just it become a job and not become something that's fun to do. And uh, you know, if you go back and you look at South Carolina last year, they were they were really bad on the road. Got blown out of the water by Georgia, by Tennessee, by Texas A and M. Um, you know, they lost on the road at Missouri. They were kind of lucky at home. They they had to they had to score in the final seconds against Vanderbilt. Uh, they caught Florida at just the right time. Brian Harson and, and Mike Bobo went brain dead with Tank Bixby on a on a fourth and one early in that game. So I, I don't, you know, I think it's going to be a learning year from the standpoint, another learning year from the standpoint of what South Carolina does well. But when you say what did he bring, he, he just changed the mindset to where this has become more of a family oriented program. It's become more of a, a fun program. I think I think I was on with you guys maybe the day after Shane or the day of, and they had had the video come out, the viral video mm. of, of Soldier Boy and everything. And, and so the, what he brought in the first year is really kind of the love for football back, and even for the fan base, a passion and excitement that had been here since 2014. It's interesting how you put it on the idea of changing the mindset. And maybe the you know one of the biggest changes for Spencer Rattler coming over from Oklahoma is the mindset and the expectations that go along with a guy that was preseason odds-on favor to win the Heisman, quarterback university lincoln riley everything that went along with that and obviously it didn't go very well and he couldn't have had a lot of fun with you know backing up caleb williams and getting mop-up duty uh, in the middle portion and late portion of the season so i mean it's safe to say he's in a different position now i mean he knows he's the starting quarterback but those expectations of the heisman of playing a qbu aren't necessarily there is it safe to say that changing rattler's mindset is just as important as, as what Beamer did last year, changing the overall program's mindset. Yeah, I, excuse me. I, I think it, it goes back to what we just talked about. And, and, you know, sometimes we get called up, especially now with name image like this, and this becoming more of a job. And, and the pressure, Lord knows, in the SEC alone of, of going out and competing and, you know, the so-called voluntary workouts during the summer. We know those, those aren't voluntary anymore. And, you know, the, the pressure can really get the kids in. Now factor in what South Carolina is versus Oklahoma. And I think you're exactly right. And, you know, at times this should still be a fun game for the kids. And there's nobody in this town who's asking Spencer Rattler to go 12-0. and 0. There's nobody asking him to go out and win the SEC. It is a different mindset here than what he was dealing with a year ago in Norman when he was expected to be the, the Heisman winner. He was expected to lead Oklahoma to college football playoff and then go be the number one pick. Uh, in the NFL draft. And here it's more like, hey, continue to build the program, have a great year, and, and showcase what South Carolina can be for recruits in the future. 
And Rattler, of course, gets all the headlines because he's a quarterback and he came from Oklahoma. But, I mean, they brought in some other uh, some other ball carriers, pass catchers. I don't like to use the term skill, skill players. Uh, Christian Beal-Smith, top running back at Wake Forest. Corey Rucker had a big year at Arkansas State last year. So, I mean, they've... I, I don't want to throw the word upgrade just yet, but, I mean, they've brought guys in who've had success previously. It's not all on Spencer Rattler as far as the transfers are concerned on the offensive side. No, you're you're right. Um, Antoine, or we call him Juice Wells, had a, a monster year at James Madison. And, and, again, you just mentioned Corey Rucker from Arkansas State, who uh, was another big addition. Christian Bill Smith did it at Wake Forest, and, and I know a lot of people hope he's the next Kenneth Walker III who obviously went from Wake Forest to Michigan State. And, you know, for me, it is interesting. South Carolina landed a four-star wide receiver last year out of Texas named Landon Sampson. And at this time last year, South Carolina had him committed, and we were promoting Shane Beamer's first year. But but a lot of the talk was, hey, there's some issues, some deficiencies in the skill position. Don't worry. They've got this kid, Landon Sampson, coming in uh, next year out of Texas, out of South Lake, uh, Southwest Carroll or South Lake Carroll, whatever. And, and he'll he'll play a role, and that'll help the development of the South Carolina offense in year two. Now, mind you, again, that was only in year one. Well, now you fast forward a full year, and you're right. That guy that we had been talking about isn't being mentioned in the preseason. It is Corey Rucker. It is it is Josh Fan who stepped up last year and showed what he could do in the SEC. It's Antoine Wells. It's another guy, Austin Stogner, who obviously came from Oklahoma. to Jaheim Bell who showed what he could do in the SEC. And so you did have both on this on the, on the current South Carolina team, uh, Josh Fan and Jaheim Bell, who stepped up in SEC play. And then for me personally, you know, to go on you guys' show or to go on any show, I still try to temper the expectations because we all know doing it at Arkansas State or doing it at James Madison, while those were really good statistics, uh, really good years guys have, doing it on a week-in, week-out basis against SEC competition is a little bit different. Mm, it, it definitely is, well, and it, it's it's hard to win. I mean, there's a reason that the SEC – uh, both the East and West is viewed as the uh, hardest conference in all of college football. Heck, if not all of college sports. But you, you, you brought up a little bit earlier, you know, especially when we were with you uh, last time at SEC Media Days, uh, about the video. And the new video that I've seen uh, around Twitter and some different sites is written about, which looked like it was recorded at SEC Media Days with uh, Marty and McGee. How is South Carolina fans uh, kind of taking the um, this Mark Stoop shots that he, he took when he talked about the difference between climate and culture, and doesn't have to he doesn't have to put on stupid sunglasses anymore? How has that been received in South Carolina? Well, you guys know the history of Civil War and the first state to secede and, and get fired. Right now, we're currently figuring out how to declare war on Kentucky or University <laughs> of Kentucky and Mark Stoops. It was a it was a funny radio show this morning, and I did have to kind of keep reminding people that, hey, look, in, in all seriousness, this is, you know, one coach and one opinion, and this is what talking season uh, is all about, where one guy makes a comment. Uh, and and what, what was even funnier is you, you kind of had to remind people, as you just said, that those comments were made, you know, a month ago, four weeks ago with Mark Stoops. You've seen him get fired up in the last few weeks um, uh, with John Calipari and, and the disrespect that uh, John Calipari showed to uh, Stoops. But, uh or the football program. But, yeah, people here are – all of a sudden people forgot about playing Arkansas and Georgia in any of the first five games. Uh, Kentucky on October 8th is circled, and <laughs> people want to go and take over Kroger Field or Kroger Stadium. And, uh, I, you know, Lord knows if Gamecock fans get up there and start hitting that bourbon trail, that's going to be a nightmare of a scenario <laughs> in that stadium that night if South Carolina can win. You know, Will, by the way, uh, South Carolina won the last women's basketball championship, so it's a women's basketball school. What if Don Staley told everybody that? Oh, good Lord. How would Don't Shane Beamer react? In Arkansas, and you didn't say that here right now. People, people start targeting Arkansas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will, Will when we talk about this, this Arkansas matchup, which I'm sure we'll have you back on to kind of preview it a little bit more in week two. Uh, I'm seeing some similarities between what South Carolina is going through right now and what Arkansas went through a, a few years ago. You get that kind of big name. I, Spencer Rattler is a bigger name than Felipe Franks, but a, a good transfer coming in. You, you build some hope, and you know you feel like you're on the right trajectory. Where do your listeners and South Carolina fans kind of see this Arkansas matchup as far as like a, a measuring stick to how well the season's going to go? 
Yeah, I, I mean, again, go back to last year, and, and South Carolina was awful in road games. Uh, I mean, the East Carolina game, obviously South Carolina went up to Greenville, North Carolina, and had to kick a field goal in the last second to, uh, to win that game. Georgia thumped them. Texas A&M, I think, had more points than South Carolina had yards when the Gamecocks went out to College Station. Um, Tennessee was up 35 to nothing at halftime. Uh, and Missouri, South Carolina didn't play well. So some of it, when South Carolina, look, South Carolina fans kind of look at it right now, some of it is the actual opponent, Arkansas. Some of it, okay, well, does Shane Beamer in year two have his team more prepared for road games? Mm-hmm. Can you go on the road and, and win a football game? And it's not lost on people, um, the fact that that'll be a noon game, uh, 11 a.m. start time for, for Arkansas. Obviously, the way Sam Pittman has been able to build that program, a lot of people here you see. We, we actually talked about it on the, the radio uh, last week or maybe on Monday. I can't remember, or two weeks ago. You know, if you had to pick another coach in this league, it just would be fun to play for. That just That is just a part. Their personality fits your program. And the general consensus was that Sam Pittman, he, he's very similar. He's, he's emotional. He's fun to listen to. A lot of people here at least see Shane Beamer and, and Sam Pittman as kind of similar. So, you know, it is kind of a way of looking, okay, here's what Sam used that that transfer portal and built Arkansas back into being a solid program. You know, if South Carolina can follow that trajectory and do kind of the same thing, it, it would be interesting, it will be interesting to see on September 10th where Arkansas is and where South Carolina is in year two under Shane Beamer and, and how long it may take South Carolina to kind of follow a model like that. South Carolina is in a, a very interesting place as far as, an SEC school that isn't the dominant football program in their state. You know, you can say the same about Auburn, certainly, but that's a different thing. You know, you got Clemson in that league. Um, what, what, is that, what does that do to South Carolina? We've got people thinking Clemson eventually is going to be part of the SEC, and, and maybe that'll be a good thing. I don't know. But, you know, for, for a program, a, a pro, South Carolina football is a big deal in Columbia. Like, I've been there. And I know they're they're rabid fans, and the atmosphere there is fantastic, you know. But but people look at it from the outside and say, well, that's not Clemson, you know. Does does South Carolina ever just like do they do they use Clemson as the barometer for you know what they want to be, or is it just like you know screw those guys up there? Yes, the the latter. Um, <laughs> what what has been interesting is. Uh, when Dabo Sweeney took over at at Clemson, a lot of South Carolina fans made fun of him. And and, and obviously, I'm not sure how familiar everybody there in Arkansas are. You guys are with the history with Steve Spurrier. And South Carolina went on a five-game winning streak against Clemson um, there from 2009 to, to 2014 or 2013. And so South Carolina was beating Clemson, and under Spurrier was winning 11 games. And Dabo would do some goofy stuff. I think they – I think they beat Notre Dame in the rain, and he came up with the BYOG, bring your own guts to the game. He's yelling and screaming at midfield, and he's dancing in the locker room. And South Carolina fans are, you know, making fun of Dabo Sweeney for, for the antics and for, uh, you know, how, how he kind of handled himself publicly. Well, fast forward now, especially coming off of the Will Muschamp era, which, which again, you know, I think I think you can get secrets out of North Korea better than you can get them out of Will Muschamp. And, <laughs> you know, you – Shane Beamer is very similar to Dabo Sweeney. They they say there's things that, that Shane says that I kind of roll my eyes, and boy, that's very Dabo-esque. And, you know, 10 years ago, we were making fun of Dabo. So I think from a standpoint of seeing how Dabo did it, um, that you can be – you don't have to be Nick Saban. You don't have to be businesslike. You can have fun and, and promote a fun culture um, – I think South Carolina fans like that model. Okay, hey, we can we have a coach that's similar to that. Now, as far as anything else Clemson related, South Carolina would would just assume let Clemson be annexed off to Georgia. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports, contests, and events with first to market odds and lines. Find reviews and news for every league, including Major League Baseball, NFL, NBA, NHL, combat sports, esports, and even golf. Bet online continues to be the top online resource for all your sports information from live in game betting, props, and futures. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to join today and make your your first sports bet use our promo code believe 50 to receive your 50 percent welcome bonus on your first deposit that's believe b-l-e-a-v 
50. That's believe B L E A V 50. Bet online where the game starts.